Hello, my name is Stephen Hall from Spark Systems and I'll be talking about MATLAB and Simulink integration in Enterprise Architect 15.2. We'll start off talking about using MATLAB via JavaScript within EA and then looking at the new console for MATLAB, then using a MATLAB solver in the state machine and other places where JavaScript is used, and finally looking at the SysML simulation using the new SysFIS standard examples. So we'll start with MATLAB in JavaScript. We have a few examples in this EA sim model which will be made available later on. We'll start with the simple examples. There's First thing you need to do if you want to use MATLAB is create what is called a solver. This is quite a simple line, new solver, and you can do MATLAB. We also have a solver for Octave, which is an open source equivalent of the MATLAB. From this point on, you can use this MATLAB variable, and there are three main calls you can use. One is to set a variable in the MATLAB workspace. Next is to get a variable from the MATLAB workspace. And the third is to execute a command or a function within MATLAB and receive the result. So we'll start by looking at the set command with simple examples. The first parameter you pass is the name of the MATLAB variable to be set, in this case simple value, in quote marks to pass that parameter. And the second parameter is the value that you want to set the variable to. Uh, most simple types will be automatically converted for you. So numbers, just type the number. For strings, you can type a string. Here's an example setting a simple number. An example here is a JavaScript string in the variable myString can be passed in as a second parameter. To get the variable back, you do matlab.get and pass in the name of the MATLAB variable that you want to retrieve and that will be assigned into the JavaScript variable here. I'll run this now and have a look at the output. And you see in the script output that it started MATLAB due to the solver call. MATLAB takes a few seconds to start. I'll we'll scroll back to where we were. So we see that the result returned from MATLAB was a number and the value was 3.14. And for the second example, the um, type returned was a string and the example was, this is an example string. And that's from this code here to output to the system output screen. To make a function call, we pass in the name, I'll use matlab.exec for execute. We pass in the name of the function as the first parameter. And if there's a single parameter required by the MATLAB function, then you just pass it as a single value. And you can see down the bottom here, seal 7.4 rounds up to eight. And that's the value is returned into the JavaScript code. If there's a MATLAB function call that requires more than one input argument, they can be wrapped up in a JavaScript objects like this. Um, or we um, have a helper class called args, which wraps them up for you. So this is simple um, JSON notation, which is the JavaScript object notation. And the order of the arguments will be determined by the order of the named arguments. So these zero argument is eight and the first uh, uh, argument one is 4.5. 4. 4. The helper function args up here, the simple wrapper class that loops through any arguments that you pass it and inserts them into the object. And the notation is a bit simpler there, arguments eight and 4.5 passed into the function called minus. And then here's the output from MATLAB. So simple numbers and strings can be passed directly like that, and so can arrays. MATLAB is essentially an array manipulation language, uh, so it has lots of 
handy notation for creating and manipulating arrays which will which are not available in things like JavaScript. Here's an example of creating an array called A within the MATLAB workspace and it's going to have values starting at 1, going up in increments of 0.5 and ending at 10. If we get that variable back out into JavaScript and then see what it looks like. So there's the array and here's what it was when it came back out into JavaScript. 1, 1 1.5, 2, up to 10. The simple JavaScript arrays can be passed directly. Here's an example of a JavaScript array, numbers 1 to 9, and variable A, and it's called matlab.set, the name of the array in MATLAB workspace, and then the variable. You can then confirm what it looks like by pulling it back into JavaScript. And we see down here, there's the array inside MATLAB. So this is a MATLAB call saying display the array inside MATLAB, and this was sort of showed. And then when it's returned back into JavaScript, we see that the array is the same. Similarly, two-dimensional arrays can be passed directly. Here's one being passed in line. Three lots of two elements. And again, we see returned round trip from MATLAB. Lastly, you can pass string arrays. Again, JavaScript has string arrays, so you can define them directly like this, just with quote marks. And you can do one dimensional or two dimensional arrays. Okay, so that's the simple functions that are available in the new solver class. Now for some examples of using it in a slightly more real world situation. This script is a random number um, generator and then plots the output in a histogram. By default, MATLAB's uh, random number function, randn, will, will give you a normal distribution, so a bell curve of results. Um, so here we start off, initialize the solver. All scripts will start with this same code here to initialize the solver, and this solver will remain active until this function loses scope. So if you need it in a global situation, then you can define it outside of a function to make it global. First thing we do is shuffle the random number generator so that we get different results each time. If you don't want that, if you want reproducible results, MATLAB has a function that will tell it to use the same starting seed each time. Next, we'll set three variables in the MATLAB workspace, the number of samples to generate, the target standard deviation, and the target mean. So we're going to have a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of five. Next, we call the exec command to execute the random number generator which will generate the 10,000 samples, multiply by the standard deviation and add the mean to give us our normal distribution and leave it in a MATLAB variable called y. We can then directly graph the results inside MATLAB again with the histogram and calculate the actual mean and actual standard deviation. And finally, the last call here is a UI wait, which will pause this JavaScript script until the MATLAB plot has been closed. Firstly, just clear the output. Run this now. Another advantage of doing the code this way, if we keep all the large numbers within all the large numbers within MATLAB and not pass them back and forth between MATLAB and JavaScript, we should get better efficiency as well. So we see the output's been plotted. It looks like a pretty good bell curve. Mean, approximately 500. And standard deviation of five means one, two, gets most of the results. And if we look down here, we see that the actual mean is 500.07 and the actual standard deviation 4.99.
If we run that again and again and again, we'll get very similar but slightly different results each time. Um, the next example I want to show is a solar panel output. This example uses uh, an existing .m file inside MATLAB, which is a file that estimates the power output from a solar panel based on latitude and longitude, time zone, and um, size, I think. And there's also an efficiency term which I haven't used here. These examples exist in a pre-installed MATLAB, but they are not on the default path. So the first thing we need to do is add the example directory to the MATLAB path using their add path command, and then simply run the function. And plot and show the output. And then we see the outputs come out 153 uh, kilowatts, I think it is. And we can have a quick look at this path and see all the other examples that are available. But anyway, that will show you a .m file for the MATLAB function. It's about a page long, so there's quite a bit of stuff goes into calculating the offsets due to the time zone and the latitude and longitude. And um, it calls into other MATLAB functions that are either core ones or other .m files that are in that same path. The last example I want to show is one that's using a user-generated MATLAB function, which I grabbed from the MATLAB web page. It's an image processing example, which has been manipulated a bit, but basically it loads up two images and then overlays one, a dimmer version of one over the top of the other. So for this to work, this function here, all of this, needs to be inserted into a file called imageprocessing.m and added into the MATLAB path folder. The default folder for user projects is documents slash MATLAB. So we have a quick look through what it does. It loads up to JPEGs, plots the first one, waits for you to close the image, plots the second one, waits for you to close it, then it creates a duller image of the second image and overlays, combines them into the, sorry, excuse me for a second, and combines the two images and then plots the output. Our code to get some meaningful output from this simply executes the function and receives the average HSV values, the hue, saturation, and value, and and plot and shows the results. So we run that. Wait for MATLAB to start. There's the first image on the street. The second image, and then the base image, the overlay after it's been manipulated and then overlaid on top. And we see the results that came out of the hue 0.5, saturation 0.08, and value of 0.6. And that ends the first part demonstrating using the new MATLAB solver in JavaScript.